Today we're going to be taking a look at the 10 inch Dexter Never Adjust Electric Trailer Brake Kit for 3,500 pound axles for the left and right hand side. This can be part number 23-468-469. It's also available individually for the left hand side using part number 23-468 and the right hand side using part number 23-469. So here's what our brakes are going to look like once we have them installed. Now these are going to be a 10 inch diameter brake and be about two and a quarter inches deep. Now one of the nicest things about these brakes is the fact that we're not going to have to adjust them. Maybe the initial adjustment up front, but after that they're going to be self adjusting. So whenever the brakes start wearing down, they're going to automatically adjust out so they're at the right pressure. And the fact that it's a whole assembly, it's going to be a lot easier than replacing each little spring or trying to just replace the shoes on your old assembly. The installation is going to be rather simple. We're going to take our old brakes off, or if we're adding new brakes, we're just going to push the brake assembly into place, and we're going to have four nuts that we're going to put on the back of the studs, and then we'll just have two wires to hook up. Now our brake assembly is going to come as a kit. We're going to have the left and the right hand side, and it's going to come with all the mounting hardware, as well as the plugs to go in the back so we can make our initial adjustment. Compared to some of the other self-adjusting brakes like the e-trailer self-adjusting brake kit, they're going to be almost identical. But the main big difference between the two of them is going to be the brake pads themselves. The Dexters here, you can see on the edge where it's not exactly super clean. That's because when they manufacture these, they score them and then snap them. Whereas with the e-trailer brand, they're going to be a nice clean cut because they're fully cut instead of scored and snapped. Now over time these can cause a little bit of more wear on the edges because it's not a super clean cut there, but Dexter is a well known brand and they do offer a quality product. If you're comparing these to manual adjustment brakes, these are definitely going to take it there because they're going to be much more user friendly because they're going to require that much less maintenance. We're not going to have to crawl underneath our trailer making adjustments every so often because they're going to adjust themselves. So now that we've seen what our brakes look like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get them installed. To begin our installation, we went ahead and jacked our trailer up. Now we are using a jack, but we also have a jack stand underneath the frame towards the back and we remove the wheel. So now we're gonna to need to remove the dust cap, take a screwdriver, go along the edge, just slowly work it out. And with the dust cap removed, we're gonna go ahead and clean up some of this grease so we can see what we're working with. Because we're gonna to to pull the bearings out and regardless if you have brakes or not, like we don't have here, we're still going to have to pull the hub off and pull all the bearings out as well. Now if you have a cotter pin or a keeper tab, you're going to want to bend that out of the way or pull the cotter pin out. That way we can get that castle nut to come off. We're going to pair of channel locks and remove that castle nut so we can pull everything out. Once we have the nut removed, we'll go ahead and remove all the washers and the keepers. We'll clean them up and set them aside. And sometimes it helps if you just pull on the hub a little bit and the rest of the washers and that bearing will come out. We're going to remove the hub and we're going to want to clean off the spindle extremely well, get all that old grease any other kind of debris that may be stuck on there from driving around. So with the spindle clean and the mounting surface cleaned up a little bit, at this point, if you have brakes, you're going to want to remove them. And typically, these four mounting flanges is where there's going to be two nuts on each side that we're going to have to remove, and then we can pull our brake assembly off. But if you're adding brakes like we are, we just want to make sure that that mounting surface is pretty cleaned up, doesn't have any major debris on there, and then we can grab our brake assembly. You want to make sure you grab the correct one. They are going to be labeled. It's going to be a sticker that's going to tell us this is the right hand side, and we are working on the right side of the trailer. Now on the back, you'll notice that we're going to have those four studs coming out. That's going to go into those four mounting holes, and you want to make sure that your wires are going to be up out of the way whenever we go to slide it in place. So we'll go through the center, having the spindle come out, 
we'll line up the holes. Just kind of hold it in place for now. Then we're going to take the included hex nuts and we're going to thread them on to the back to make sure our brake assembly doesn't fall off. So we're to make sure you get all four of them on at least hand tight and then we can come back and tighten them down. I'm going to come back with the 1116 socket and I'm going to torque that hardware down and we'll find the torque specification in our instructions. Just make sure you're paying attention to the size because they do list several different sizes in the instructions. So now we can move on to the electrical connections of our brake assembly. We're going to have two green wires coming out of the back. Now we already went ahead and ran our brake wires. One, the black wire is going to be our brake signal, and our white wire is going to be our ground. Now it doesn't matter in what order we hook these up. So we're just going to take one of the green wires. I'm going to take a blue heat shrink buck connector, slide my wire in, and crimp it in place. Then I'm going to take one of my other wires, either the ground or the brake signal, put it into the other end of my buck connector, and crimp it down. And we're going to repeat the same process for our other green wire coming out of the back. I'm going to come back with a heat gun and shrink down my connectors. Now if you're using an open flame like a lighter or a mini torch, you want to be extremely careful not to burn or char the connectors or the wires themselves. With our connections made and our brake assembly torqued down, we can go ahead and repack our bearings and put everything back in place and put the new hub and drum assembly on. Now we already have our wheel back on and you want to check for a slight drag whenever you're spinning the tire. You don't want it to be too much to where you're really trying to force that wheel to turn, but you also don't want it so loose that it's just free spinning. You want to hear that a little bit of a slight drag as you're turning it, but if your brakes aren't adjusted to the right spot just yet, we can go ahead and move underneath to the back side of the brakes and we can pull out those two plastic plugs. There's going to be two plugs at the bottom of our brake assembly, and that's where we're going to be making our adjustments. Now it's going to be easiest to use a brake tool to make the adjustments inside the drum. There's a little wheel that's got some teeth on it and we're going to want to turn that and that'll tighten up our brakes. But if they're somewhat close that's okay, we can go ahead and leave them alone because they are self adjusting and after a few applications they'll start to adjust into the appropriate spot. And those plugs will just snap into place. And now that this side is done, we go and repeat that same process for the other side. And that'll finish up your look at the Dexter 10 inch Never Adjust Electric Trailer Brake Kit, part number 23 468 469.